Ladies and gentlemen, from Amsterdam in the Netherlands, now making his way into the ring, Innocent, the little big man, Anyanwu. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. I've seen Innocent Anyanwu a fair bit over the last two or three years. He's been a regular visitor to the UK. I saw him fight Sierra Osgul back in the summer. Osgul at the time was Southern Area champion. And he took him around on that occasion. He's done the same thing with the likes of Tuka Mucha, Johnny Coyle, Sam McNess. I saw that fight too, so he knows exactly what he's doing. And as you can see, there comes in good shape. He is giving away a few years, though, to Anthony Tomlinson. I think it's fair to say that. This is 67th contest tonight. And now, entering the arena, the reigning Central Area Welterweight Champion, fighting out of Sheffield, Anthony Tomlinson. Well, he looks fairly sinister there, Anthony Tomlinson, with that balaclava on, but there's a reason for this. In his former life, as he describes it now, he did a lot of things that he's not very proud of. He lost his liberty at one point, then he wears that balaclava into the ring to serve to himself as a reminder of the road he used to walk. And then he gets into the ring and he takes it off to really stand for that new beginning that he's made since he's turned over to boxing. It's, it's a fairly, I wouldn't say standard, it's a fairly common story in boxing, Andy, but it doesn't take the power out of it. I mean, a lot of these young men and women really find a new purpose in life through this sport. Well, boxing has given so many men and women a chance at life, you know, where, on the, like an outlet, when they were, they wouldn't have it otherwise. So, he's to be commended for switching his life around. And I know this, he says this a reminder, but I'm sure it's also to intimidate his opponent, whoever that may be. Yeah, I think there's certainly an element of that. Eight fights, eight wins for him so far. He's the reigning Central Area champion, so he's got a foot on the ladder. First recognised British boxing border control title that you can win, and he'll be hoping that it's onwards and upwards from there. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and we welcome you to the Sheffield Arena here in Sheffield, England, for a very special night of boxing action. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing, sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports. Broadcast live on Sky Sports, Facebook, and YouTube channels, and live exclusively in the United States on DAZN. All of tonight's bouts are sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Robin Smith. Your timekeeper from Doncaster is Peter Humphrey. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring from Barry, A-star referee, Mr. John Latham. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he stands with his head trainer, Ian Johnson. He wears the white with the black black with the white fringe. He weighed in at 10 stone, 6 pounds. This former Benelux and Dutch featherweight champion is a 66-fight veteran hailing from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Introducing Innocent, the little big man, Anyanwu. Anyanwu. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He stands with his head trainer, Steffi Bull. He wears the green, black, and white. He's scaled at already 10 stone, 8 pounds, 4 ounces. This former Yorkshire amateur champion now has a perfect professional record. Eight fights, eight victories, three of them coming by way of knockout. He is the reigning undefeated Central Area Welterweight Champion fighting out of Sheffield. Introducing Anthony, the true Tomlinson. Tomlinson. Be ready. Nice jabs and walks. All right, son. Let's do it, brother. Tomlinson sold a few tickets by the look of it, the local fighter, the home fighter from Sheffield. Right, lads, you're not expecting you both. You obey me instructions at all times. When I tell you break, you both break clean. Defend yourselves at all times and the best luck to you both. Touch gloves, lads. 
Looks in good shape, Tomlinson. Did tell me yesterday that he could still make lightweight, but there are more fights for him up where he is now. I mean, it's 12 pounds he would have to take off to, to make lightweight, so I find that quite unlikely. Maybe he meant like middle. Seconds out, round one. And then you, I've seen him a couple of times. And not that he comes to win, but he definitely comes to fight. So this will be a nice little test for Tomlinson here tonight. I think so, and that's that's a fair summation of An Yan Wu. He's 40 years old now, but he stays in condition, and he does come to give it a go. He did that against Sam McNess when I saw him. He did it against Sierra Old School. There's a few different weights that he can straddle, which is what you need to do if you're going to hit the road and pick up as much work as you can. Tomlinson has not been boxing long. He had about 15 amateur fights. Walked into Dennis Hobson's gym about five years ago, looking to pursue an MMA career, but. It was boxing he focused on in the end as turned pro with Steffi Bull and Ray Doyle. It's a, a busy gym, some very good fighters in it. The likes of Josh Whale, Andy Townend, Jason Cunningham, Lee Appleyard. Lots of titles they've won, actually, over the last few years, so it's good company. Both men just having a look at each other at the opening stages of the fight. And now New using his experience just to see what's in front of him. He might never have seen Thompson up to this point. Good of a cut by Tomlinson there. That was a good shot. And Anyan Wu felt that. Just backpedalling, just using the outside of the ring to find himself a little bit of time. Right to the body there from Tomlinson. Nice right hand on the inside there too. Just made enough space for it and cracked Anyan Wu on the jaw. He looks good, composed, Tomlinson. Stalking his man with a kind of a cold calculated approach. Made that leap winning the central area title. He stopped Jace Dixon in the fourth round. He's got some good sponsors and he's working hard at it. He's got three children to support and he said to me at the press conference on Thursday that the kind of things he used to get up to seem like a very long time ago now. Slightly overreaching with his jab at times, um, but always looking to set up the right hand. Carries that left hand low, gets it back up there in the defensive position, but then again just sticking out that left. I think he should get busy with his jab. That will establish a rhythm for him, which he'll be able to work off. Because while he's just jabbing sporadically like this, he's finding it hard to reach and to, to uh, make contact with an annual. Just trying to lead with the left hook there, Tomlinson. Didn't quite reach with it. And Yan Wu's always got those gloves pretty much, much up in position. Good right hand there to the body off the back of that jab. Just shoved the jab in and then went to the body with the right hand. He's got good reach. Decent opening round there from Tomlinson. He looks like he's got some tools but as you say maybe he could just have put his punches together a little bit more in that first round this is scheduled for eight though quite awkward when you find somebody so much shorter than you you can almost be left exposed because you end up reaching a lot um, and he has to be careful he did leave his chin up quite high and as you can see he doesn't have that kind of natural boxing boxes coordination that you have from when you're doing it from a young age um, I don't know if it's going to be a problem tonight, but maybe as he steps up and through the, through the levels, he'll have to watch his, his backhand when he throws his jab, not to draw away from his chin, and also keep his chin down when he punches. He's getting comfortable. So when he gets comfortable, he's there to be hurt. Take it to him. Second out, round two. So into the second, and Yan Wu's not been stopped much in his pro career. But he was in his last fight. That was back at the end of October, down in South Sea. And Tomlinson looking more aggressive at the start of the round there. That right to the body found the target again. That's been a decent shot for him so far. That was an important exchange for Tomlinson there because Nan Wu came out looking to have a go, but he was met by the punches of Tomlinson, so he kind of put him back in his box immediately before he could build up any momentum. That's 
You can hear the corner quite clearly telling Tomlinson he needs a little bit more bend in his knees and then he'll be set and ready to deliver the shot. The right hand didn't really land, although he went to the body and, and Yanyu, I think he's shaken though, I think he's a little bit hurt here because he's just leaning in and looking to grab hold. That's always a sign when they hold like that desperately that he's hurt. Be interesting to see if Thompson can follow that up now. And maybe that big right hand just caught him high on the head. He didn't really seem to find the target completely cleanly, but it doesn't have to. There it is again, just swung up from the waist. He obviously does have uh, a little bit of a dig on him here, Tomlinson. Well, it was interesting because the corner was saying, as you mentioned, to dip your knees a little bit uh, and you'll be able to land because he's finally showed up home. That's exactly what he did. He just squatted a little bit more and he found a home for that right hand. Well, just those 15 amateur fights, he's very much learning on the job as a professional, which is not an easy thing to do. And a little bit of that inexperience is shown now because if he knew a little bit more, he'd probably be stepping on the gas here because I think if he did, this fight would be over. Nice right to the body again there off the back of a decent jab and he's really loading up with that left hand but just took half a step back there and found the right distance and Yan Wu though off the ropes with a decent left hook himself. That's the experience of an Yan Wu. You have to always be careful, even if he looks in trouble, he'll always fire back. I think it's a matter of survival now for an Andrew. I'd say you're right. Just over 30 seconds remaining in round two. Nicely timed right hand there from Tomlinson. And Yanwu came in with a right hand of his own, but he went straight over the top of it. And now he just looks to club him with that right hand again. When he backs him up on the ropes, what, what's good about Tomlinson is that he doesn't rush in and, and smother his own work. He finds a good kind of range and distance for it. Nice looking jab there from Tomlinson. He looks a decent fighter, doesn't he, from what we've seen so far. There's a touch of inexperience there, obviously. Sometimes when, as you've said, sometimes when he might look to try and step on his man a bit more, he, he doesn't. He looks a very good fighter for the level of the competition he's had and the amount of experience he has. He's obviously got some sort of natural ability and he carries some power in that right hand. And I know Nanu doesn't usually get stopped, but a lot of those fights are at the lower weights, you know, maybe in that light welter and welter. He's fighting at the middle right now and Thomason looks like a good, good size. Even though he says he can make lighter weights, he looks like a good size middle weight to me, so he's probably carrying a good bit of power in that right hand. Well, he does look big for the weight, doesn't he? He's a welterweight tonight, but I wouldn't mind betting that by the time he's got in the ring that he's more up towards in the 150, certainly. Second out, round three. But he does box across a number of weights, and Yan Wu, and, and you're absolutely correct. I mean, some of the fighters he's been stopped by, the likes of Anthony Upton, Edith Tatley, who became European lightweight champion, so that was down almost a stone lighter, Dennis Berinchik as well, the London 2012 silver medalist, picked that silver medal up at welterweight and is a very capable fighter, Tomlinson just looking to try and spear that jab through the guard and then there's that right to the body again. I think they told him in the corner, Tomlinson, to start using the jab and everything else would come, that's, that's the perfect instruction really. Yeah. At this point, sorry Andy, at this point it looks like Thompson doesn't have any respect for what's coming back at him from the enemy and this is like he really just wants to punch through now and hopefully get a stoppage. Looking busy with that jab, he gets some decent weights on it, just flicking it up from the waist. Just dips over to that right hand side quite often, that's where he transfers the weight fairly regularly, just inching forward with that front foot, and again looking to throw that jab. I do worry a bit about fighters who carry their hands that low, particularly if they've not been boxing for that long at some point. That could be a problem. Especially when his chin is, is quite high. Um, 
But a good body shot landed in that in that last exchange there, and then we definitely felt it. But he used his experience to disguise it. There's that big roundhouse almost clubbing right hand, which if it does land is going to cause a serious problem. Jab again, just getting through the guard. Every time he throws that jab, pretty much every time he lands it, there we go again, just pokes it through those gloves. It's not a particularly effective guard, that Fran Yan Wu. It's hard to see what Ananu does from here now. He's really, his only hope is to land one lucky punch. But hurt there with a the right hand. Right uppercut. Difficult to see from here how cleanly it landed, but it certainly has some effect because he stumbled forward and Yan Wu and immediately just looked to try and grab hold. When, yeah, Andy, when you're an old, older fighter and you're a veteran like an Andrew is, the punch doesn't have to really land clean, you know? It can be on the side of the temple or even around the ear and it can hurt you because when you had so many fights and you've been in the game so long, your legs are the first things to go and it really can be any sort of flash punch that will, will hurt you and, and, um, and will shock you in a sense. So 20 seconds left in round three, the schedule for eight and that finishing tape seems a, a long way into the distance here for Innocent. And Yan Wu came over by himself. He's picked up his corner team on site here in Sheffield. <laughs> Decent round again for Tomlinson and, and Yan Wu just taking the walk back to his corner. Brilliant. Fourth round coming up. Invaluable experience, you know, a especially in, in a big arena like this, with matching cameras here, yeah, and all the atmosphere. You know, this will chest. be building him, when and he'll be learning from this. Work, and hopefully, walk. when he steps up in competition, it won't be so unfamiliar to him. That was the uppercut, wasn't it? That just clipped him on the chin, I think. Yeah, side, kind of side of the jaw, and he had to hold. And that's the experience from an Andrew to hold straight away as soon as he feels that. Relax, the legs. So, you, 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 so your hands are two down, get him up, keep that jab pump in a one-two. Brilliant. Steffi Ball there, just saying, Call keep it basic, seconds. more or less, you know, and that's what will be effective. Sometimes the flash stuff with the hands down and the uppercuts and the, and the wide Second swing down, punches, they're great eye-catching shots, but sometimes the basic boxing is the most effective thing to do, especially with an experienced old fighter like an Andrew. It's interesting, actually. Last week, we were watching a fighter in Joe Hughes boxing for the European title in Italy. And due to a condition he suffers from, Herb's palsy, his right arm's three inches shorter than his left, and it's not nearly as useful as his left. So really, everything comes off his jab. And he's practised it so much down the years that it's turned into this incredibly effective weapon. And it's just a great advertisement for what can be done with a single punch if you really work on it. Well, I think I was quite famous for my right hook, but that was because I couldn't even brush my teeth with my left hand. <laughs> I'm so predominantly right-handed that it does become more strong. Good uppercut on the inside again there from Tomlinson. And Yan Wu, though, continues just to walk forward, trying to use that high guard, trying to get onto the inside and let something go. He manages it there, but it's been few and far between so far. He's trying to change his tactics, and it might be his last chance to do something in this fight. He's probably thinking Thompson's an experienced young, and he's seen that his chin is quite high, so he's trying to walk forward with his hands high, hoping to catch Thompson with one of these overhand rights, or maybe an, up, an up, uppercut or left hook from, from a low position coming up. But he also leaves him open to be encountered as well, and hurt, because he'll be walking forward, and when he walks forward onto a punch, it will double the impact. There's that jab again, just flicking out the jab. And Yang Wu trying to jab his way in himself that time. He's not managed to really hit Tomlinson with much other than that left hook off the ropes. But he's certainly trying. And this is what you were saying at the start, Andy. He's not necessarily going to expect to win here, but he always throws and keeps throwing. Took a good right hand from Tomlinson there too. And another one, that kind of scything punch that comes in round the back of the garden. It's just moving and Yan Wu, even if it doesn't land clean. The first one did, the second one didn't. Tomlinson has taken the instructions from the corner quite well. Like in the first round, or the second round, he dipped his knees and landed that very good right hand. Now they've told him to keep his hands up and all they're down at the moment, but he is more keeping his hands up more in this round, and it is it's paying dividends. Just standing still there, Tomlinson, seeing if he can draw something from and Yan Wu, who moved in and He's really only safe when he's close, and Yan Wu everywhere else, and he can be in trouble. He almost looks bored now, Thomason. <laughs> he, uh, 
better not get, you know, drunk on his own success in there and better st step on the gas a little bit. And if he does, he'll have a stoppage and it'll be an impressive stoppage if he does. Well, ticking up towards the midway point of the fight, the scheduled for eight. Lead right hand there from Anyang, and then just moved straight in behind it. So kind of a shot to nothing, really. Gone onto the shoulder of Tomlin as soon as the bell goes. Four down, four to go here. And the uppercuts work well for him so far, Tomlinson. Landed another good one here. He switched it to the head and to the body very all night, and um, it's probably a good punch against a shorter man, especially somebody who wants to be so close, so there's no real danger of getting caught with an overhand right yourself. And, uh, yeah, and he carries power on it, like every time he's landed it, he's hurt an annual. That's a corner, Steve Bowen and Derek Waddell just taking care of and Yan Wu. As I said, he comes over to the UK see this, see a fair amount. A bit of swelling just below, beneath that left eye. What kind of dynamic can they have in the corner relationship if they just met before the fight? You know, it's, it must be a difficult situation for the fighter and for the coach as well because he doesn't know how to train this gun. He doesn't know what the fighter is even capable of. And uh, he's got to go in there and try and direct them for a fight. Well, that's it, they met for the first time today. I saw Steve Bowen arriving and he was looking for the dressing room. He's very experienced, and Yan Wu, of course, and he will decide if and when he has had enough or if he feels that it's worth pushing on and trying to get to that finishing tape. I would imagine he won't be boxing again this year. Big overhand right there from An Yan Wu, and that almost landed clean. But a good right hand in return. Oh, another one there from Thomas, and now he's really hurt. And Yanwu just stunned back onto the ropes of Thomas and trying to get to work here. And Yanwu just leaning in, looking to grab hold. He looked for another big one over the top there, Tomlinson. Wasn't quite enough space for it, but he does have a bit of a dig on him, as we said earlier on, because he's hurt him a couple of times. There is a size difference in here, of course, but in terms of their weights yesterday, they were pretty similar. Well, over two minutes still left in the round. It'll be interesting to see if Thomason can, can push, put the foot on the gas line and get the finish. It'd be good to see him do that. As you said, if he could work the stoppage here, it would be impressive to see him do that. Jab to the chest, that's never a bad idea. Just keeps Anyanwu back on his heels, off balance. And now he's backed him up to the ropes. He's looking for a way in. Looking for the finish now, Thomason. You can really see it that he's... He's not going to rush it, but he's definitely doing it in a methodical way, in a calculated way. Another good jab there landed, stiff jab, and knocked an annual off balance. Every now and again, he steps in and looks for that big overhand right, just steps away to his left-hand side and trying to get off the punching line. And Yan Wu is beckoning Tomlinson in at times to try and get everything he can. Big right hand again there, just explodes on the jaw of An Yan Wu, and I thought he might be about to go, but he took that well, actually. And Thomason, a little mistake there, and I guess he's very so comfortable, but he stepped away after landing that right hand and um, doesn't want to make a habit of that. It seems like he's enjoying it, though. So I guess he wants to make this last. Well, he sold a few tickets. Now he wants to give people something to see. There was that jab again, just landed square in the face of Anyan Wu. Lining up the uppercut, and his gloves just dropped there. The referee's going to jump in any second Good now. This John Latham gets in, and, and Yan Wu really is all over the place there. It was very, very telling. The right hand landed, and initially he kind of looked OK, and then the gloves just dropped, and he was an open target. I thought the referee could have stepped in maybe a couple of seconds before a second. You know, it's splitting hairs, but no, it was a good stoppage and uh, the right call by the referee. Impressive by Thomason. It was. It was a good performance because Anyan Wu as we said, he goes across a few different weights, but he doesn't get stopped very often. I've seen some good fighters in recent times not manage to do it. He's a big welterweight, Tomlinson, and there's a size difference between the two, but for somebody who's only had 15 amateur fights and now in his ninth professional fight, he's won an area title, he's, he's improving on the job, but there are, some, there are some raw materials to work with there, definitely. It certainly is. Um... The power in his right hand's apparent, easy to see. Had a good variety of punches, had a very good solid jab throughout the fight. Yeah, an excellent prospect. Well, let's just have a look at the finish, and there's that right hand, and there go the gloves. And then he just about got it back together. 
I thought the referee could have just jumped in, but look, splitting hairs, and it was a good stoppage, and probably let it go long enough so that the corner couldn't have nothing to cry about or complain about. Right on the chin. And at that point, he was an open target, really, just listing into the ropes, and you just look at his eyes there, and... That's, that's why I said it could have been him, because he's never going to win the fight in Anru. It was only a matter of time, and why let him take any more punishment than needs be? Well, John Latham was close at hand and did jump yes, in, and he's just trying to ride it out there. And Yan Wu, but was touched with the jab and then hit with the right hand again. And Tomlinson, as we said, when he... It was a beautiful Africa, shot, a beautiful shot, because he'd been looking for the right hand straight. You know, he threw the right hand straight a lot of the time, and maybe Yan was anticipating that, and all of a sudden he turned it into an uppercut and had the telling effect. The fourth stoppage win for Tomlinson, and that now is ninth professional victory. Let's go to our MC, David Diamante, with the final announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, referee John Lathan calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and 23 seconds of round number five. Your winner by RSC, he's still undefeated. He's proudly representing Sheffield, Anthony, the true Tomlinson. Was next for him after this, and I think he's got the defence of his central area title in the pipeline. Steffi Ball might be able to tell us a little bit more about that. Echo Esserman, good fighter from Knott's Way, a former GB amateur. He's the English champion at the minute. I wouldn't think there's any particular rush to get in with Esserman, who will just be that bit more well schooled currently. There's no need to go crazy with him just yet, get him a few more fights and uh, defend that area title and see what happens. Yeah, and then he's trading. He's got a little something about him, you know, and there's a little star quality to him and um, his style is unconventional, but that might make him more effective as he, as he goes along. So, yeah, he's a good little prospect. Well, here he is with Andy Scott. Anthony, congratulations. It was a terrific opportunity, terrific stage for you to showcase your skills. How do you think you performed tonight? No, I think I did really well. I kept going to the corner. I'm gonna, I kept saying to Steffi, I'm going to do eight rounds. I'm going to do eight rounds. It was easy. I didn't want to, I didn't get out of first gear, really. I wanted to get eight rounds in, but when I hit him with that shot, he had to get him out of there. Simple as that. <laughs> Yeah, he's a wily, experienced character. He's only been stopped six times in 66 fights, but you seem to hurt him every time with the right hand. Yeah, the, the thing is what people don't understand. I can punch hard and vouch everybody, ask everybody who they fought me on way up. They know that I punch hard. When I'm sparring, I punch hard. And anybody that gets in front of me and I hit them right, it's good night, baby. I'm telling you. <laughs> In that respect, are you punching hard enough at world to weight to stay at world to weight? You've been up and down the weights. Is this the weight for you? Well, weighs that weight at me. I'll go down to 10 stone if I have to go down to 10 stone when opportunity is. I'm there. Steffi knows I'm always in the gym. If there's a big opportunity, give Steffi a ring and I'm coming. And I promise you now, I'm going to win, baby. Ah! And I'd like to say thank you to everybody that's turned up in Sheffield. I love every single one of you that buys tickets so close to Christmas. And you don't believe it. Ah! Special you've made me feel tonight with crowd and that. Thanks again. I love you all. You've already been to area level. You talk about I want to win. So where, what is the goal for you? Which route do you want to go? Well, if you're looking crowd, my boy is there with green top on. And I remember him coming to Steffi's gym and he's like, Daddy, I want that belt up there, that rainbow belt. And I'm not going to stop till I get that British belt for my son. Mark my words, whoever's got that British belt, when I'm ready for that, I'm getting that for my son. I promise you now. Let's hear from your trainer, Steffi Ball. Yeah. He's only had 15 amateur fights, yeah. but you obviously have high hopes for him. How far can he go? Yeah, Anthony's a model professional. He lives in the gym. He's, he's probably the most one of the most dedicated fighters I've got. He's in twice a day, every day. He's actually moved in, uh, to a mile away from where the gym is just to be... He wants to give his son the best, uh, the best opportunity, but he's learning all the time. Let's not forget this is only his ninth fight tonight, like you mentioned, 15 amateur fights. So I'd like him to defend his central area title We've already agreed to uh, a fight somebody, uh, an undefeated fighter, so I'd like to get out of the way. And then push on for English title eliminators and, and build him all the time. He's got great fan base. They get behind him really well. And we're having some great nights together and many more to come. Well done. Thank you.
So delighted Anthony Tomlinson there and Steffi Ball very enthusiastic about this man and there's every reason that they should be because that was a good performance. He sells a few tickets, he's dedicated, so he's got really everything that you could need. Yeah, and he's, as I said, he's got that little bit of star quality about him. You know, I don't know if it's twinkle in the eye or what it is, but he's got something about him. And uh, he's definitely a good prospect and he needs to, as he's got a good man of Steffi Ball just to guide him and, as he said, take his time and build in the right way, let him get his education and then step up when the time's right. Absolutely. Well, talk of English title eliminators, I mentioned that Echo Esserman is the English champion currently. But the news here today was unfortunate because Josh Kelly is not able to box against David Avanesian. He was taken ill overnight, so that contest is now off the bill. And it's a real shame because Avanesian is a former WBA regular welterweight champion, conqueror of Shane Mosley. He took part in a good tussle with Lamont Peterson. It would have been a really good test for Kelly, and nobody will be more disappointed than him. I'm sure he's good at that right now. You know, I haven't spoken to him or Adam Booth. Um, I've only heard what you guys have heard, but... He will be good at um, but these things can happen and he's such look to me he's one of the best prospects in world boxing and why take a risk if he has been ill overnight whatever that may be down to um why risk him you know by taking a chance or a fight that is definitely a big step and a big progression in his career but they could always do it again in a month or two when he recovers from whatever illness he has well, top of the bill, of course, is Cal Brook, who looked absolutely terrific on the scales yesterday. He's up against Michael Zarafa. Zarafa coming in just under the super welterweight limit. He's never lost at super welterweight. His two defeats have been at middleweight. Brook, his weight I thought was fascinating, Andy. Ten stone ten, bang in the middle of welterweight and super welter. Just to make the point, I think, that he can box at either weight. There was rumours that he was going to come in at 147 on the welterweight limit. Um, but he looks, he looks good, he looks happy and he looks fresh and he showed that he could fight at either light, middle or welter, which is, which is great for him. I did ask him about, about welterweight the other day on Thursday because I said, you did say after Errol Spence that you could just never do it again. And he said, well, the problem with that was that he was coming down from middleweight, he had too much muscle mass to lose and that was what made it so difficult. That's long enough in the past now that it's not such an issue. Yeah, and look, there's so many great fights out there for him because he's still a big name. Um, that he could to, to go between either either weight division. There's so many big opportunities for him. Okay, so an interested observer at ringside now, a, a resident up in Sheffield, is Charlie Edwards, and he's with Andy Scott. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Charlie's actually not had far to travel at all. Uh, how is your final preparations going ahead of your world title challenge on December 22nd? Everything's going absolutely smoothly. I'm absolutely buzzing. My trainer, Grant Smith, he's made my training camp go so smoothly. All I've got to do is turn up for my training sessions and give 110%, and that's what I've been doing. My recovery, everything, diet, everything's on point, and I'm really looking forward to shine on December 22nd. A lot of British fight fans will know plenty about Christopher Rosales. It's very unlikely that he'll be watching this. What have you and your trainer, who's sitting just behind us, actually, what have uh, you been working on, uh, particularly to face a man that's going to be taller than you with longer reach, you would think? You say that he'll be taller than me. I believe we are really the same size. And I, when we square up head to head, I think it will shock him and shock a lot of people. Obviously, Paddy Barnes is small, so he looks so massive. But um, yeah, we've been, we've been turning the screw day in, day out. We've known about this fight for a very long time. It was in ums and ahs whether we was going to get it. But yeah, we're working on the game plan. I ain't going to reveal too much, but believe me, he's going to be in for a shock. Andrew Selby was down in the first round uh, against him, but then outpointed him widely. Did that show the way to beat him in your eyes? Um, yes and no. He's won uh, the world title against Higger, and then he went on and done that to Paddy Barnes. He, it was a few years ago now, so a lot can change in a few years. In 12 months, I'm a completely different fighter, so I know that can change. I don't look too, too much into that performance, but I know his flaws and I know I can expose them. We wish you all the best of luck, and I can also see your brother down the line. You've become an uncle this time, uh, yes. first time this week, so well done to the whole Edwards family. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, good times for them at the moment. Sonny Edwards doing really well too. A great win against Ryan Farag not that long ago. And Charlie, about this time last year, gave up that British super featherweight, uh, super flyweight title rather, and he was... Things just weren't really happening for him, and that, that happens in boxing sometimes, as, as you know yourself. And, and now he's got this world title shot, he's dropped down, the weight is not a problem, and, and he feels he can do it. 
One thing about Charlie was he has a great attitude. You know, you talked about those times when there was nothing happening for him. He was almost in the wilderness. He was training in our gym in, 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 in um, Red Hill in the boxing boot gym. And he didn't have a fight scheduled for months and there was no even fights on the horizon. But he trained as hard every day and he pushed himself. He's one of the hardest workers I've seen and one of the best runners on the track I've ever seen. And I think he's got every chance in the world of beating Rosales. Rosales is an excellent fighter, much improved. But I think if anyone's got a chance, it'll be Charlie because he's a great boxer. Well, let's get our next fight of the night in the ring. Over to the MC, David Diamante. And now, entering the arena from Bulgaria, Konstantin, the Russian Alexandrov. Alexandrov is another pretty regular visitor over to the UK. I've seen him a couple of times this year too at York Hall in July. Danny Dignam stopped him in the second round. Dignam, as we know, a good fighter. And to be honest, he took care of him pretty easily. He was also stopped by Linus Adofia who is scheduled to meet Taylor Jones for the Southern Area title. That's in March now. It was supposed to already have happened, actually, but injury meant that it didn't. But he's been the distance with some good fighters too, Luke Blackledge, Elliot Matthews. Matthews, who was down to challenge for the Commonwealth middleweight title, and hopefully for him that will get rescheduled. So really, Dignam's the one who's done the best job against Alexandrov. Thompson, pretty inexperienced. And now, entering the arena, ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated Southpaw from Sheffield, Shaquille, Dr. Steel Thompson. One fight and one win so far for Shaquille Thompson. Adam Etchers just standing behind him there, he's managing him. Roger Samson is training him, six foot three. Southpaw of middleweight and for that reason and he was sparring Billy Joe Saunders when Saunders was scheduled to box Demetrius Andrade and it's uh, some unusual dimensions on him. Yeah and a great nickname, Dr. Steele. <laughs> Shakir Dr. Steele. Um, I've certainly seen a little bit of footage on him and he looks quite, quite capable and look when any of you are fighting a Southpaw who's 6 or 3, that's, a, that's bad news for anybody, that just spells awkwardness and we'll see if he can put some power behind that awkwardness and, and height. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the Sheffield Arena, we are set to go with a special middleweight attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing, sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports. Your timekeeper for this bout is from Doncaster, and his name is Peter Humphrey. At the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring from Fleetwood, A-star referee, Mr. Steve Gray. And now, ladies and gentlemen, full rounds of boxing scheduled in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears it black with the white trim. He stands with his head trainer, Baz Voskov. He weighed in at 11 stone, 9 pounds, 1 ounce. This 47 fight veteran hails from Velika Tarnova, Bulgaria. Introducing Konstantin, the Russian Alexandrov. Alexandrov. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He stands with his head tra tra trainer, Roger Sampson. He wears white with the black. He scaled at a ready 11 stone, 6 pounds, 1 ounce. This southpaw is an eight-time Yorkshire Titleist. And his young professional record thus far perfect. One fight. One victory, and that victory came by way of knockout. Fighting out of Sheffield, introducing Shaquille, Dr. Steele Thompson. Thompson. Okay, let's have a cold break. You take one step back. Don't punch you on the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch close. Good luck, lads. I was chatting to Adam Etches and Shaquille Thompson at the press conference on Thursday and Etches couldn't say enough about him, he's excited about him. Etches used to be a Sheffield fighter as a pro himself, of course, was a massive ticket seller. Him and Scott Jenkins used to pack out arenas, both hung up their gloves now. Etches has gone into the business side of the sport and as we described, Thompson, a six foot three inch southpaw, which makes him unusual. Alexandrov, I'm sure, will have 
a good look before he decides how ambitious he's going to be. I already like the look of Thompson here. He's come out and he's on the front foot immediately, and he's also fainting and, and twitching. And, and against a shorter fight, it's a very good sign, trying to draw his lead and encounter. Made his debut on October the 12th. It lasted just 40 seconds. I mentioned the sparring with Saunders. He actually lives about five minutes away from the Ingle Gym in Winco Bank, but he doesn't train there. Trained by Roger Sampson at the Man of Boxing Academy. Looking to set up the left hand. And um, always active with his feet too. That's another good, good sign for him, especially if he has to make a quick step back. Alexandrov so far just hasn't really been able to do anything at all. That lead hand is always just popping out, just trying to judge that distance. Sometimes he just taps the glove, sometimes he puts a little bit more into it. He's using it mainly to measure that left, as you say, Andy, and he's beginning to let that go with a bit more venom. Goes to the body this time. A nice variety of punches from Th Thompson so far. And it's sometimes when you fight in the, uh, a man who's set on defence solely, it's very hard to look good against him, but this is basically all you can do. You either fight at a pace that they can't live with, or you hit them with a punch you don't see. But it's very hard to do with somebody who's just, their whole mindset is just defence, defence, defence. But he's looking good here, he's looked sharp, and he's got fast hands, and he's got good variety with that left hand. Going to the body now, and that could be the key for him to, to drop the hands. Well, this is pretty rough this first round for Alexandrov. He's never looked hurt, but there was a good right to the body, then the left into the pit of the stomach, and there comes the jab with just a little bit more sauce on it. A couple of heavy thudding left hands there from, Th from Thompson. The only thing that might go against Thompson in this fight is that it's a four-round fight, and someone with um, Alexandrov's experience could always last four rounds and know how to survive. They would have picked up tricks for years of just always being the opponent. So I'll be interested to see if he can if he can force a stoppage within the four rounds. Trying to touch him with that jab. <laughs> Dipping away to his right, looking for the right to the body, then the left hand, then just switch the angle up a bit for a right hand over the top almost, and digging his toes in right at the end of the round and just trying to find a few different angles and he doesn't look too concerned there Alexandrov as he walks back to the corner but that was a good first round. A very first round, it's only second fight so he's still very much in the learning phase but towards the end of that round there he just was swinging at will and, and more or less landing at will and <clears throat> if he can keep that up for the next round or two he's more than likely going to get a stoppage because I can't see Alexandrov taking too many of those shots. Or staying on his feet between rounds. Let's just have a look at those punches he put together towards the end of the round. Mixing up well between head and body, and that's what you have to do with, these, with, with this type of opponent. Um, don't let him see an, an established rhythm or set pattern. Keep him guessing, so that way he won't know where the punches come from. No, one of those punches are likely to hurt him. Second out, round two. So into the second is scheduled for four. Shaquille, Dr. Steele Thompson in the mainly white shorts and Konstantin Alexandrov from Bulgaria, who we see over here quite a bit in the black and white. He was very much on the back foot in that opening round. Our visitor didn't really have the opportunity to throw too much at all and he goes down to the body again there. Thompson. I don't think he's threw a punch in this whole fight, Alexandrov. And that'll show you how defensive... He, and he's not been able to because Thompson's been so, so on the offensive. Alexandrov just popping out a right hand there, but as soon as he put it out, he brought it back. There was nothing on it, just an arm punch and some good purchase on these left hands into the body here from Thompson. Again, just touching with that lead hand, tapping with those shots on the inside there, varying the, the weight of the punch. Sometimes you can hit a guy so cleanly and so often that they become acclimatised or kind of accustomed and to being hit in that certain way, and then it's very hard to knock them out. One trick that you can do, and one thing I've always found effective, if you change the speed of your punches, or you hit them with, with one punch 
with a certain heaviness, like a light jab, a light jab, a light jab, and all of a sudden, a hard hook behind it, at a different pace and a different speed, that, that can usually stun them, and it can open them up to, 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 for bigger shots. But sometimes, if you're just landing so cleanly like Thompson is, <laughs> the guys, they get used to being hit like that, and, and, and they get a cups, and it was very hard to knock them out. He's trying to prize him open with little shots, little feints. Um, but I do believe it's going to have to be, you know, a, a clever or a sneaky punch to catch Alexander. Knight. I do wonder whether if he really put his foot on the gas in, say, the fourth and final round and he was just landing and landing and landing and there's nothing coming back, whether Steve Gray would just feel like he had to jump in because referees under the British Boxing Board of Control, as soon as they feel that the fight is just not competitive in any way, they will look to stop it, so he might be able to force a stoppage that way. Well, one thing is as well with Thompson, is when you're throwing hard punches like this, and anyone would notice from hitting a heavy bag, it's quite draining yourself, you know, because you, you're kind of straining them and putting everything into every punch, and a lot of these are hitting the gloves. So he's got to be careful he doesn't drain, his, drain himself out as well and, and lose his power. And he should just really try to switch the speeds up and, and, and throw some lighter punches and, and mix them up with heavier punches. Not every punch needs to be heavy. Did just that on the inside there, really let her left hand to the body go, then they just, just moved in and tapped to the head slightly. Good work here from Thompson. Just touching to the head and banging to the body. Exactly what I asked for, but didn't have the effect yet. Well, halfway through this one. Nice and sharp, but no power. Get his hands riding up, and as soon as his hands ride up, drop down to the body. But not just one, double the same shot to the body. Are you listening to me, Shaq? Yeah? Are you listening to me? Stay focused. Little drink. Yeah? Feel good? You can do this all night, can't you? Yeah, because you're fit. So I want to see that work rate increase. When you know you've got him in a little bit of trouble, you need to put these shots together. Combinations, don't let him off the hook, man. If you want the stoppage, you're going to have to work hard for it. You're going to have to tip tap to the head, bring them hands right up, drop down to the body. When the hands go down, back to the head. You listen? You're going to have to make him put his hands where you want him, yeah? Okay? You start little taps to the head, make the hands ride up, drop down to the body. You listen? Nice and sharp. I couldn't agree more with the corner there. Perfect instructions. Adam Etch is watching on. As I said, he's excited about him, and Etch has brought some excitement, as mentioned earlier on during his career. But bad hands and bad eyes, he told me, meant that he needed to call it a day after a points defeat against John Ryder. But he's enjoying himself being on the business side of boxing, and he really feels that he's got the fighter on his hands here. And from what we've seen so far, he could well be right. Technically, he looks good. It looks like he's carrying a bit of power for, for somebody of his height. And like I said that at the start of the fight, any six foot three southpaw fighting that middleweight is going to give anybody problems. But he look, he's looking good here, and he's following the instructions of the corner getting to a T. He's tapping up the top and trying to just prize open that engine off and hoping to, pa to power down the body. It'll be interesting to see if he does work because it, once you set, as I said, once you set the rhythm. It's very hard to pick the gear up, so it'll be interesting to see if he can go through the gears now and force a stoppage. Good right hook there. As soon as he looked to try and throw a right hand there, Alexandrov, he left himself open, and that's really why he's not throwing anything at all, because every time he does, he gets caught. Left hand high on the head, and down he drops to a knee, and this could be the beginning of the end here, because we've got just under two minutes remaining in the round, and you can see he's getting marked up, and if Thompson just steps on him and puts the punches together, I don't think Steve Gray will let Alexandrov take much more of this. Even before he went down there, I thought Steve Gray should be starting to have a look at him because he was taking everything, and he's not offering anything back, and I think it's only a matter of time now. Well, Steve Gray, I think, is he's poised and ready to pounce. If he doesn't see anything from Alexandrov, he does throw a punch back, but every time he throws one, it just makes it worse for himself, really. Very close to stepping in here, I think. And in he comes, and that's the right thing to do. As I said, as soon as... The bout is completely uncompetitive, then the referee will stop it. They will give these lads a chance to box in the away corner. They know how they make their living. They don't want to jump in too soon, but he was just getting an absolute beating there, Konstantin Alexandrov. There's no other way to describe it, but it was an educated beating at the hands of Shaquille Thompson, who certainly does look to have 
something about him. We've seen two interesting fighters on our Facebook coverage, Anthony Tomlinson and Shaquille Thompson. He's quite quiet. Couldn't get that much out of him when I spoke to him the other day, but uh, he's dedicated, obviously. He's in tremendous shape, and as you say, with that height, uh, he doesn't look like he struggles to make middleweight at all. Uh, and being a southpaw, he's got something to offer. And technically, he looked quite good. Um, yeah, we saw two excellent prospects here, two local prospects, and I'm sure they'll be delighted to get the exposure on Sky Sports Facebook. It was a shot that kind of landed on top of the forehead, and that can be very disorientating. You know, and even before that, he had taken quite a few heavy blows, so I think he was more or less looking for a little break. If that punch wasn't, like, you know, concussive enough to put him down, he definitely needed a little reprieve from, from the onslaught. And at this point, there was a long way left in the round, and he was never going to survive it until the end. And good work for him from Thompson, you know, switching up and showing that he can fight at close range too for a tall man with long arms. He did mix it up very well from long range to short range, so a lot to be excited about by, by this young man. And in came Steve Gray, and that was the end of the evening's work for Thompson and Alexandrov. Let's go to our MC, David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Gray calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and 48 seconds of round number three. Your winner by RSC, he's still undefeated, Shaquille, Dr. Steel Thompson. He's got another fight scheduled for February, mid-February in Sheffield against Spencer Thomas, so he'll be having a little bit of a break maybe over Christmas, but I doubt that he ever gets too much out of shape. He's certainly the kind of fighter who looks to stay in the gym, and it'll be very interesting to see how he goes over the next few months, over the course of the next year, because with the height and the reach and the stance that he has and some of the ability that he looks to have, matching him might not be the easiest thing in the world in his next few fights because he will want someone at some point who's going to try and bring it to him in in a fashion unfortunately for him he might have to stay at this level for a while fighting these type of opponents but this is all great experience for him um build his record and then eventually step up when when the time's right he's down ringside now with that uh, with andy scott Shaquille in just your second fight. It's a stoppage win in the Sheffield Arena. Just how satisfying is that? Yeah, it's a good win. Um, I know this guy doesn't hardly get stopped, so all the hard work's paid off. Yeah, he was negative. Uh, he probably didn't come to win. What was your mentality and your game plan after those first few seconds when you realised you were going to have to work hard for it? Um, just fainting. I could see that he was um, weren't adapting to my style. Um, so just fainting, tip-tapping and landing those big body shots and uppercuts. 40 seconds on your debut, you've got three rounds tonight. Did that show us a little bit more about what you're about? Um, yeah, I, today I could have stopped him in the first round if I wanted to, but I thought, let's get the rounds in. Um, three rounds, um, and I got the stoppage. Third round, I thought, let's get the stoppage, and I stopped him. What's the big difference for you from the amateurs? You're a young pro. Um, the biggest difference is, really, there's not much difference. In amateurs, you, you're boxing top quality boxers. Um, no head guard. The difference really is training more, training harder, um, and it's paying off in the ring. So. Yeah, do you think it's going to suit your style? The, the professional game, Andy Lee, was very impressed there at ringside. 100%, 100%. It's already suiting my style. Um, when I was in amateurs, everyone said pro would suit my style, so definitely. Everyone has dreams and goals when they turn over. What are yours? World champion. Nothing more, nothing less. Just going to grab a quick word with Adam Etches, who's working with you. You've got high hopes for Shaquille? 100%, my, my goal was to become a world champion myself. When I knew that that realistically weren't going to happen, I've decided to hang my gloves up and see if I can manage one, and I'm sure I'm in the right direction with this kid. What advice can you give him? You've been on both sides of the ropes now. Just, just listen, and listen to people who know what they're talking about. Um, he's got a good trainer in Roger. Um, I know what I'm doing from boxing myself and listening to Richard, my manager. So just, just keep listening and doing what he's doing, and I'm sure he'll get there. Adam, great to see you, and Shaquille, well done tonight. Thank you. Well, as we've been saying, we've seen a couple of good fighters, a couple of fighters who look like they might be going places, and Anthony Tomlinson, and also again there, 
Shaquille Thompson as he makes his way backstage and hopefully he will be getting showered and then joining us at ringside for some good action down the rest of the card as well. It's a shame, of course, that we're not going to see Josh Kelly tonight against David Avanesian, but these things happen. But we will be seeing Terry Harper. One person's loss is always somebody else's gain and she gets moved up to our opening fight in front of the Sky cameras a little bit later on. She's 4-0 and oh, and from what Steffi Ball says is a very capable fighter. Kez Ashvak spent a long time on Team GB up here in Sheffield, just down the road at the English Institute of Sport. And he's a very tidy boxer. But again, you always have to wait and see how the transition is made. Yeah, this, we're in for a great night of boxing here. You look through the card and everyone has some, something to prove. You know, if you look at Terry Harper, she wants to establish herself as, as, as you know, an established female boxer, pro boxer. You look at Kez Ashraf, he wants to show that he's transitioned, as you said, from the amateurs to pros and show that he has the power because a lot of people doubted that he ha would carry any power as a pro. And all through the card, Kilgad had Anthony Fowler, John O'Carroll, can he step up and become push step forward as the mandatory for Tevin Farmer? You know, we know he wants to fight. And then Kel Brook, he wants to show this is an important fight for him because it's a potential banana skin. I don't think there's any fear of him losing it, but how he goes about winning, he has to look good doing it. And stay active so we'll see it's, it's an interesting card everyone has something to prove on this card tonight Cal Brook is generally pretty efficient when it comes to dealing with opposition who are felt to be of inferior quality to him and I would expect him to do that Zarafalo unbeaten at super welterweight I am really looking forward to Carol against Frenoir because there's a lot on the line there as you say and we just kind of think that maybe John O'Carroll after a bit of a slow burn of a career over the last two or three years could possibly have it in him to be a bit of a star. I agree with you. Look how he carries stuff outside the ring. He's you no, know, he's a good talker. He's charismatic. He dresses. He has the big beard. <laughs> so he is a character. Um, but he can back it up in the ring, you know. And especially in his last two fights, he's looked very, very good. And he's a fighter who's on the up and improving all the time. And I think he's a fighter who lives right outside the gym. Also, you know, he seems to train extremely hard, and it's shown in his performances. About the beard, though, I mean. Surely, at some point, some opponent and their team is going to object to that and tell him to, to get it off, because I saw a tweet from Lou DiBella um, earlier in the week where he was saying that he absolutely will tell Carol and his team that he needs to take that beard off when, when they come to fight him, if and do indeed they do come to fight him. I mean, are the rules about that, just quickly? I think it's changed slightly, but there used to be a lot. I remember Angelo Dundee uh, petition. I don't remember, but I remember reading about it. Um, demanding that Roberto Duran shave off his beard for the rematch of Sugar Ray Leonard. And it really threw Duran off and it kind of, you know, already upset him and it maybe played into the whole no mask thing. But I think they should shave it to a certain length because it can't, first of all, it can't be very, like, sanitary. And then it can't be, you know, it has to be some sort of pad in there or, especially, you know, when you're in close with somebody, a big hairy beard, shave it off, I'd say. Well, the information I have, courtesy of Andy Scott, is that Frenoir and his team did object to it. So we'll see what Carroll uh, is sporting when he arrives later on. But do join us for all of that. Should be a good night, a good card, and it all gets underway at 7 o'clock on Sky.